Parks and open spaces are an integral part of the landscape of Oslo, the capital and largest city of Norway. The various parks and open spaces are interconnected by paths so that the city's inhabitants can walk between them. As the city expanded in the middle of the 19th century, areas were appropriated for parks and recreational purposes. The eastern part of the city Ostkanten, was prioritized due to congestion and industrialization. The residential and more affluent western parts of the city Majorstuen, Frogner, have comparably fewer parks and open spaces. 95% of the city's inhabitants have a park or an open green space within 300 meters of their home. Some of the many parks have a special place in the life and history of Oslo. Frogner Park with the Vigeland Sculpture Park, Norway's most visited tourist attraction. Eidsvalls Plass and Studenterlanden along the main street Karl Johans Gate. Slotsparken, which surrounds the Royal Palace. St. Hanshaugen, the first large public park outside the city centre. Berkelunden and Olaf Rise Plass in Grunerlaka. Akerselva Environment Park, with walks around structures from early stages of Norwegian industrial development. Bygdøy and Ekbergsletta, large natural parks. <laughs> <laughs> Landscape and parks The central part of Oslo is situated between hills, Holmenkollen, Voksenkollen, Vetakollen and Grefsenasen north of the city and Haukassen to the east, all of them with a height of 350 to 500 metres. The Ekberg Hill is located to the southeast, with a height of 150 metres. On the slopes from the hills north of the city Holmenkollen, Grefsenkollen and Korsvolparken are the areas that provide the best view of the city. The slopes at Ekberg have the best view over the central city area. The part of the Ekberg hill that faces the fjord has woods with paths and views towards the fjord. The viewpoints around the city have several parks, Blassen in Stensparken, St. Hanshaugen, the hills Ola Narr, Toyenparken, Kampen Park are all three with an elevation about 80 to 90 meters above sea level. Hazelparken behind Toyenparken is somewhat higher. On the Acker Ridge from Akernset with the castle along the Akersgata to St. Hanshaugen is also Kontraskeret and Egeberglaka used as parks, with views over Pipervika and the eastern part of the inner city. Torsheviparken and Myralaka on Sajin have views towards the center of the city and the fjord. Akerselva and its surroundings have in the last hundred years been landscaped in a matter that preserves both the river and its industrial history. The task of developing the other rivers within the city as parks has started. The work with the River Alna has been concluded with an environment park while Lysakrilva, Frognarelva, Hovenbecken and Leonselva are still under development. Oslo has a long shoreline that has been used by shipyards and ports for the last 150 years. In the west, on the border to Barham, the Vakiroparken is situated along the shoreside. Beaches with parks are Hukon Bygdøy, Katten and Vervenbukta and areas on Malmoya and Ulvoya. The Fjordby plan allocates more access to the shoreline for the city's population. Among the islands within the city border Hovedoya, Gressholmen and Langoyan are easily accessible by ferries, and have extensive parks and beaches. In Gamlebian, the water level in Middelalderparken gives a view of the shoreline in medieval ages. <laughs> <laughs> Early parks in Oslo In the late medieval age, there was a garden north of the Olav's monastery, currently the bishop's residence, where vegetables were grown. The garden also had a fish pond. Aside from that information, little is known about gardens in medieval Oslo. It is nonetheless most possible that the monastery at Hovedoya had a garden, created by the English monks who lived there. 
The garden at the castle Akershus is the earliest depicted garden in Norway, possibly created around 1560. The garden had neatly arranged beds, a pavilion and a fish pond called Munkadamen after the feudal overlord Christen Munk. The garden was cleared by the end of the 17th century, and the pond was filled in around the 1860s, though it was reopened in 1965. In the 1770s, the Kanonparken was created by the Commandant. It was open and constructed in public, though it was not primarily intended for use by the civil population. Palehaven became the first publicly available park when the owner Christian Ancher opened it in the 1760s. It was Norway's only city park in Baroque style and was situated by the shoreline. The only thing left of it today is an alley of linden trees on Christian Frederiksplass. Plata. Many enclosures around the early city had gardens, mostly for growing vegetables, from the 18th century also as parks. Ponds were created for fish. The only one of these enclosures unsullied is the closure rolide at Professor Dahl's Gate 32. The garden on Marcelli's enclosure is the current Eidsvalls Place, where German and Dutch gardeners around 1600 created what became the finest garden in the city. Around 1840 a public park was established on Eidsvalls Place. The area south of Eidsvalls Place was later developed. The nearby garden on Ruselaken, the current Studenterlanden, was a Renaissance garden at that time. The garden around Munkadamen in Pipervica was around 1750 one of the first semi-public gardens where the upper class of Christiania went for walks, but it decayed after 1790. The pond was about 50 metres wide and 100 metres long and was a continuation of two earlier, separate ponds one assumed that the monks from the Hovedoya monastery had created. In the pond there was a small island with a pavilion and a herb garden. North of Stortergat and Grensen several parks were created around 1700, among them James Collett's Grenshaven between Akersgata and Grubbegata, in Renaissance style. The garden at Oslo Ladegard had hedges, paths in a square system, a long pond and alleys down to the fjord, in Renaissance style. A small part of Ladegardshagen was recreated in 1999. Grunerhagen, created by the Gruner family on Nedra Foss was around 1700 a grandiose garden with terraces, alleys, a pond with a garden pavilion on piles and a zoo with various animals. The garden was destroyed by the end of the 19th century. Bygdoy was the summer residence for the Viceregent and had a Renaissance garden from around 1680. The peninsula became an excursion spot by the end of the 18th century. Around 1830 a new garden in landscape style was created at Kongsgarden and walks in the nearby woods were cleared. Several of the estates around the city had grand linden alleys in the 18th century, Stublian, Linderid, Sondra Bjolsen, currently Bjolsenparken, and Nordreskoyen Hovedgard. Linderid Gard had a large garden with a 70-metre-long canal and a 120 alley of hazel trees. In the city centre there are still linden alleys in Palehagen, Regeringsparken and Dronningparken. The park surrounding Bogsted Mansion from 1780 was the first in Norway in landscape style. Peter Anker engaged a gardener from Germany who utilized the slope from the main house down to the Bogstadvane Lake, with curved paths and artificial creeks. A similar style was applied when John Collett created the park around Ullevall Gard, known for its rich variety of sentiments and as a center for the city's social life. Vaquero also had quite a large garden in a similar style and it is preserved today as Vaqueroparken. The wealthy Burnt Anker created a Baroque park at Frogner Hovedgard at the end of the 18th century. When Benjamin Wegner bought the estate in the early 19th century, a romantic landscape-style park was created. That park included parts of what today is the Frogner Park. 
Around 1800 there was a total of 96 persons in the city that offered gardening services. Topic 1812 to 1865 the first public parks When tiny Christiania with around 10,000 inhabitants became capital of Norway in 1814, the foundations for creating parks were not favourable compared with other largest cities in Europe. There were no castles with gardens, that could become a public park, as the Tuileries Palace. There were no continuous ramparts that could be demolished to make way for a park, as in Copenhagen Tivoli Gardens, Botanical Garden, Orsted Park and Austre Anleg. There were no large areas in the centre of the city that could be converted to parks, as the Royal Parks of London. Before 1870 there was no consensus as to whether the city should engage in constructing parks. When the city's park administration was founded in 1875 and the rapid expansion of the city started, there were all the same several nice parks. Various private persons and organizations had provided for this. Citizens in the organization Selskabet for Christian Yabais Vel had constructed several parks. State authorities engaged in creating a capital, the area at Toyen to be used by the new university, the Bitsfunxalit jail with its surrounding park, areas in vicinity to the Akershus castle, the Garden Universitetshagen behind the university. Landlords that did not want neighbours created Eads Vols Place. A Frenchman with grand ideas, Charles XIV John of Sweden and Norway, created Slotsparken and laid the foundation for the park areas on Bygdøy. A businessman with varied interests, Fritz Heinrich Froelich, created the St. Hanshaugen Park. The Borshagen Park was initiated by Christian Yabais Vell in 1812. The organization cultivated an area previously known as Groningen. This was the first publicly constructed park in Christiania and it was opened in 1819. It was named Esplanaden and was an important place for walks, even after the Christiania Stock Exchange opened in 1826. The organization Selskapet for Christiania Bais Vel concentrated on creation of public parks as one of its main priorities during its first 50 years of existence. At the bridge Nybrua crossing Akerselva the organization erected the city's first outdoor monument in 1833, with a surrounding park. Bankplassen was laid out with the city's first bed of flowers in a public park around 1860. Trees were planted around Oslo Cathedral and Trefoldegetskirken, and the organization managed to stop construction at Kontraskirat. Selskapet for Christian Yabais Vel did also organize planting of trees along various streets, among them Gronlandslirat, the road from Nybrua to Toyen, Dramensvayan and Radhusgata. Some of the trees are still standing across Kontraskirat. The Slotsparken, surrounding the royal palace, was laid out from 1838 to 1844, in landscape style with large trees, paths, ponds and lawns in the curved terrain. Within Slotsparken the Dronningparken face Dramensvayan and is a romantic, intimate park, constructed some years after the main park and in general closed for the public, except for a limited time during the summer. To the east, facing Karl Johans Street are the heights Abelhaugen and Nisseberget. The 225 decker large park has a number of well-known statues and sculptures. King Charles's original plan for the park was for it to continue to the Uranienborg Woods, where the Uranienborg Church is today, and be part of a chain of parks from the Royal Castle to the Baigdoy Peninsula. The king's monumental plans were not realized in full, but the Slotsparken is Oslo's major central city park and the landscape of the Baigdoy Peninsula with its woods, beaches and paths has made a major imprint on the city. King Charles took possession of the mansion at Baigdoy and proclaimed the area as a public park in 1837. He bought enclosures along Frognerkillen and constructed Lindehagen, today's Dronningberget, north on Baigdoy. 
The wood that belongs to the royal mansion was designated as a protected area in 1940. King Oscar II constructed pathways west and north on the peninsula. As of 1882, there were about 10 kilometers of paths available for the public. Studenterland in the center of Christiania was bought by the state in 1837. The area was by then a park called Rusalakan Park. After the university opened across the street in 1852, the park was much used by students and was hence named after them. A restaurant, Frisner's Pavilion, opened there in 1864. The park has been renewed several times over the years, the most significant when National Theatre was constructed in the center of the park in 1899. Eadsvall's Plass, with the area today called Spikersuppe, was purchased from the landlords across Karl Johans Street in 1846. The large trees in the park are probably from around 1850. The area was then still swampy and the Bislet Creek that traverses the park was still open, and not dug over before 1860. The state bought the area in 1858. It took some years before the park was finished. The statue of Henrik Wergland was unveiled in 1881. The park at the university was laid out around 1850, as an enclosed area between the university buildings at Karl Johans Street. The area at St. Hanshaugen was a scrap heap and viewed as a useless area until the celebration of summer solstice Street. Hans in Norwegian was moved there some time before 1820. The businessman Fritz Heinrich Froelich initiated a park there around 1850, got his will after much initial resistance and paid for the first works. In the middle of the 1860s Christian Yabai's Vell was involved with the new park, planted 1275 trees and helped create the first major park outside the city centre. From 1867 the city took responsibility for the park and the last major works were carried out in the years 1876-1890. The final part of the park was added with purchases of land in 1909. St. Hanshaugen had its heyday as an attraction from 1890 to the First World War. It is a classic city park where terrain, vegetation and water is used. The mixture of intimate and romantic areas in the south with more plain areas in the northern part, fabulous views, entertainment, a good restaurant Hasselbacken, animals, birds and bears in a cage all added to making the park popular. The area around Toyen was designated for the city's first university, from when the state bought the mansion Toyen Hovedgard and until around 1820, when it was decided that the university should be in the center of the city. In the years 1814-18 the botanical garden was laid out, and from around 1830 several enclosures were given to professors at the new university, the one remaining being Bellevue in Toyenparken. The state ownership of the area helped preserve large areas for the future park. Around the prison Bitsfunxelet opened 1851 there was established a park, today known as Gronlands Park and Klosteranga. The city was not particularly late in creating public parks, Bremen established its first park in 1804, Stockholm had its first public park Stromparteren in 1832 while New York City got its central park by the end of the 1850s. Topic. 1865-1916, Refuge from the City Around 1870 the view regarding parks changed, it was now seen as a natural task for the city's authorities. The view was that parks had two major good effects. It would soften the harmful influence from the city, noise, soot, smoke and dirt from the expanding industry and straightened circumstances. It would give the city residents an aesthetic impact that was educative and curative. Christiania grew faster than most European cities around 1870 to 1890. 
Property developers built houses and villas while the city provided roads, water and sanitation. Owing to fire regulations the building material was brick, and this is largely the area that today is inside Ring 2 the bypass road to. Several new parks were created, most of them in the eastern part of the city. The argument giving priority to the eastern part was that it was the most crowded part of the city and was thus most in need of parks. The city's expansion and the creation of a tram network contributed to increased commuting. Combined with steadily reduced working hours, this created a need to fill the available leisure time with activities. Some of the parks, like Campen Park, were used extensively from the time they were ready. The city's park organization from 1875, Christiania Beplantingsvesen, was a new authority for creating and maintaining parks. In 1897, the Palaihaven, currently named Christian Frederiksplatz, in the city center was ready as a public park. Borschagen was upgraded when Christiania Stock Exchange expanded in 1911. The city took responsibility for Studenterlinden and Eidsvalls Platz in 1888 and 1889. Greve Waddell's Platz by the quarter called Kvadraturen was laid out as a 14 decker park in 1869, initiated by Christian Yabais Vell. The park was created on an area previously used by the armed forces. From 1869 to 1880 several smaller parks were created in the central part of the city. By the Oslo Cathedral, three decker, in 1870. By Treffel de Getzkirchen. By Old Acker Church. By Gronland Kirk. Helften Kirolfs Plass. Bankplassen. Nordrox Plass. Sali Plass. The park around Sajin Kirk was ready in 1893. A minor park in what is currently known as Ruinparken was ready in 1872, the first park that indicated the medieval part of the city. Around 1865 the architect Georg Andreas Bull sketched a general plan for Grunerlaka. One owner and one architect for the whole area turned out as a good solution concerning parks. Three spacious parks were planned in the otherwise densely populated area. Whole blocks assigned to parks were inspired by the renovation of Paris. Berkelunden and Olaf Reis Place, laid out in 1882 and 1890, became two very popular parks, favorably viewed also today. Schau's Place at the southern perimeter of the area was ready in 1916. This gave together with the 1915 construction of parks along the river Akraselva the inhabitants of Grunerlaka good access to green areas. Campen Park was opened in 1888, on a height with a water reservoir. The view, the exciting terrain and the cavern with water where children could play were reasons for the popularity of this classic park. The nearby Valaranga Park was created in the years 1903-1916. It had the Valaranga Church in its center and a good view of Lodalen. Bjolsenparken was laid out in 1900 on a part of the garden belonging to Sondra Bjolsen Mansion, known for its Linden Alley along the ridge of the park. A large area west of the park has been assigned allotment gardening from 1912. Gronland Park, surrounding the main prison Bitsfunxalit, sometimes called Botsparken, was opened in 1913. Stensparken was the only major new park on the western part of the city in this period, and was constructed on a hill that had been used to dump garbage. The Height Korpahaugen, Blassen, is an untouched part of nature within the park. The park was constructed in landscape style from 1890 and was finished during the Second World War. The Fagerborg Church is in the southern part of the park. Uranienborgparken was opened in 1904 on the height where Uranienborg Church was constructed in 1886. The park is sited northeast of the church and parts of it were used for building a playground in 1922 and a kindergarten in 1954. 
South of the height Rittervoldsplatz was laid out as a park in 1885. Aside from the two above-mentioned parks, no major parks were laid out on the western part of the city, the reason for this being that there was no single major developer in the area. Hence, there is a striking lack of green spaces from Majorstuen to the city centre, which is also true of the Frogner area. To the west of this densely inhabited part of the city, the first stage of the Frogner Park was opened in 1904, the previous Baroque garden between Frogner Manor and the street Kirkevian. For the 1914 Jubilee exhibition paths were laid out west of the manor and bridges were built over the ponds. Among streets with trees the Baigdo Allee, laid out around 1890 soon got a reputation for its chestnuts. The trees grew, and towering close to the buildings by the street, the common view was that the solution used for Gildenlove Street, where there is an alley in the center of the street, was a better one. In connection with the Jubilee exhibition in 1914 the street Kirkevian alongside the Frogner Park was widened and got trees in the center strip. Some of the mansions in the area laid out private parks in the period, which later became public parks, as Skoyenparken, Sondra Skoyen Mansion, Ullern Borough, a large park in landscape style constructed around 1860. Part of the slope on the western side of Eekberg was bought by the city in 1889 to secure the area for the public and prevent developers from destroying the well-known landscape. Park concerts organized by the city started in 1907, which were widely popular for many years. Many of them are still in existence as of 2007. In 1901, park libraries were constructed in three parks, though the libraries in two of them were closed the same year as they opened. Nonetheless there was a park library in St. Hanshaugen until 1907. Topic: 1916 to 1940, an active public park policy. The years 1916-17 were important for the parks and the green city. The city park organization Parkvisnet was established as an independent body, with Marius Rhone as the city gardener. He had established the country's first garden architect firm and became a decisive leader for the organization. The city established a park committee, with the well-known politician Fernanda Nissen from the Norwegian Labour Party as its first leader. The committee managed to get development of parks into public debate. The city's options for enforcing its policy were strengthened by the new role the city obtained from 1911 in developing housing projects. In many projects there were large areas covered by the plans, under the well-known city planning officer Harold Howells. The class struggle and industrial actions during and after the First World War also reached Norway, and just after the war the eight-hour day was introduced. A huge part of the population in Oslo was workers, and they now got markedly more spare time. The workers' parties laid pressure on the city so it would support this extra free time with added options for activities. Until the start of the Second World War a number of initiatives were taken, as part of a coordinated city policy for parks and green spaces. The city park policy was part of a new city welfare policy that made Oslo known abroad. The first year's green areas in residential areas got priority, ahead of the parks in the city center. The city park organization maintained that by constructing robust and neat parks and removing fences the public would engage in keeping them tidy, which worked. By the end of the period the budgets were pressed and the many new parks stretched the resources. The parks had to be made simpler and flowerbeds removed. <laughs> Topic. Pathways, street trees, playgrounds and green housing areas Parks and park-like walkways shall create parkavanes through the city. 
A plan for park development from 1916-17 stated, Parks and the green corridors were integrated with the city plan, especially during development of the large areas outside the city centre that the commune had bought around the start of the 20th century. The park corridors should connect the various parks and thus enhance the value of each individual park, and in concert they should connect the city to Marca, the forested and hilly areas surrounding Oslo. The park corridors planned was the riverbanks of Akerselva, developed from 1917 from Nybrua and north from Akerselva through Berkelunden, Dalenanga playing field, the Torshav Valley to Grefsenkollen, this corridor were developed up to north of Sinzenkrisit but not to Grefsenkollen, from the Botanical Garden on Toyen through Toyenparken, Kampen Park, Ensio and Valle Hoven and from there in branches to Ederstad, Ostmarka, Ostenzo, Linderid, Alnabru, Grorid and Eekberg. Radhusplassen, Bygdoy, Frognerparken, Gausted, Sans von Alexander Keelens Plass, Geitmeira, Grabainsleta, Voldslaka, Bjolsenparken, Korsvol, Meridalen, Frognerparken, Smested, Husby, Holmenkollen. The city's park organization got responsibility for new green areas surrounding communal housing projects at Isla, Torshav, Lindern, Assen, Rosenhof, Voyenvalen and around communal schools and nursing homes. The length of streets with trees was expanded from 6,000 meter to about 20,000 between 1916 and 1947. The major street Kirkevayan got trees from Majorstuen to Vestra Acker Church, and from 1930 parts of Collett's Gate, Olin's Gate and Christian Mikkelsen's Gate were widened and flanked by trees. A total of 33 playgrounds with communal employed guards were systematically expanded until 1940, many of these were partly covered with ice in the winter, for skating while concerts and theater plays in the parks sponsored by the city continued. <laughs> New parks and Akerselva as park Berkelunden was the first park that was maintained by the new communal park organization. The renovation was finished in 1917 and people were surprised by the difference a park built by professionals made. Pathways were not slippery in rain or dusty during drought, plants and trees were cared for, and the area was illuminated. Acts of vandalism receded and Berkelunden became a meeting ground in the interwar years, very much used for political meetings, concerts and such. Torsheviparken was the first park laid out by Parkviznet after a united plan for an area, Torshovbayan that was built by the municipality from 1917 to 1924. The park is on a hill with a good view of the city and the Oslo Fjord, with a music pavilion at the peak. The park opened in 1931, and is a mixture of the formal park style with axis, symmetry and a pavilion in the center and functionalism with soft use of the terrain and large, continuous plains. Alexander Keelan's Plass was completed in 1927 as a park in formal style, nevertheless it became a textbook example of how lack of continuous maintenance would degrade a park. Already before 1940 it was worn and little used. It was renovated around 1980 but again let to rot. In 2001 it was once again renovated, with fountains and ponds which made it was once again an impressive small park. However, six years later, it was once more run down, owing to lack of maintenance. On the eastern part of the city numerous other parks were laid out. Gronlands Park on the green part surrounding the city prison Bitsfungslet 1917. Grabainsleta west of Sajin Church 1922. Rudolf Nilsson Space previously Vols Space 1927. Cuba by Akerselva on Grunerlaka 1928. Bulow Hansen's Space by Carl Berner's Space 1939. Eveld Rise Space on Isla gives a view of the park policy for the city's districts. 
It was laid out as a communal housing project in 1930 and combines a traditional park with a playground. On the western part of the city the following parks were laid out Ankerhagen at Rusalaka Amaldus Nielsen Space Vestkantergat, a not very successful trading space, converted to park 1930. Idioten on Veilaken by Adams Tuin, 1930. Langardslaken, an old enclosure on Briskaby, 1930. Arno Berg's space on Briskaby, 1932. Skarpsnoparken by Frognerkillen, 1934. Starting in 1915, the river banks of Akerselva were landscaped, starting with Theodor Kittelsen's Plass and the area around Nybrua and Ankerbrua, which were finished around 1920. The area from Nybrua to Austre Elvabak was readied in 1937. A section by Brekadamen where the river starts was landscaped around 1930. The large area on the hill Eekberg was landscaped in the interwar years and was readied in 1948 as a large area for recreation and sports. The Frogner Park with the Weigland Sculpture Park The Frogner Park is composed of the farm land of the old Frogner Manor, the buildings of the manor is situated in the southern part of the park. During World War I the park was used for cultivating food, the potato harvests in particular were large. By the start of the interwar years much of the area was landscaped. The fountains were the first part of the Weigland Sculpture Park, the work started after a resolution in 1924. Until around 1950 the work was concentrated on the 850-metre long monumental sculpture park in Baroque style. In the years before the work started there were heated discussions regarding the layout of the park, whether the main axis should be east-west or north-south. The famous monolith was erected as a single granite block in 1928. Three stone cutters worked on the 200 ton, 200 long ton, 220 short ton, and 17 meter, 56 feet tall sculpture until 1942 when it finally was unveiled. Topic: 1940 to 1945. Norway was invaded by Germany on 9 April 1940, and already on April 16 the park administration initiated the use of all suitable areas the city owned for growing potatoes and turnip. Within short time voluntary communal work was organized to cultivate food production in parks, playgrounds and gardens, 35 different areas by the summer of 1940. Many parks were also used by the German Wehrmacht for barracks, parking equipment and workshops and so damaged the parks. When the Second World War ended the park administration had a huge job restoring the parks back to their original state. At the playground on Sophus Bugs Plass there were concrete strongholds until 1953 and between the creek and Madsurid Alley in Frognerparken there were barracks used by the SS. Topic. List of parks Below is a list of major parks and open spaces in Oslo. The tables are split between the various areas of Oslo. The tables give the name of the park, size, the year established and the coordinates. Topic. Centrum. Parks and open spaces in central Oslo include Borshagen, the city's first publicly created park 4 Dekare, 1819, 59.915435 degrees north 10.745463 degrees east, 59.915435, 10.745463 59 Borshagen, is no longer open for the public.
Topic: <laughs> Inner City. The table shows parks in the inner city of Oslo, excluding the city center. Parks without proper info regarding size are arranged after estimated size. The minor parks are described under the table. Equals reliable information lacking, I addition as the river Akerselva with several smaller parks, among them Theodor Kittelsen's Plas 1917, 59.923288 degrees north 10.726490 degrees east, 59.923288. 10.726490 Theodor Kittelsen's Plas between Ankerbrua and Nybrua, Cuba, 59.918337 degrees north, 10.758605 degrees east, 59.918337, 10.758605 Cuba on Grunerlaka, the Galsen, 59.923883 degrees north 10.753034 degrees east, 59.923883, 10.753034 Vigalsen, Heftilaka on Bjolsen. In the inner city there are a few smaller parks, among them Arno Berg's Plas 0, 1 acre, 1932, 59.942258 degrees north 10.766067 degrees east, 59.942258, 10.766067 Arno Berg's Plas, Dronning Astrid's Park after 1995, 59.9 925813 degrees north 10.723365 degrees east 59.925813 10.723365 Dronning Astrid's Park Central Parken and Jenbrucksparken in Pilastrade Park around 2000 Ritterwald's Plas 0 8 Mal established 1885 59.912586 degrees Degrees north 10.711082 degrees east, 59.912586, 10.711082 Ritterwald's Plas, Skillebeckparken 1869, 59.912586 degrees north 10.711082 degrees east, 59.912586, 10.711082 0.711082 Skillebeckparken, Summeroparken 1870s, 59.914959 degrees north 10.718937 degrees east, 59.914959, 10.718937 Summeroparken, Valkyrie Plas 0.2 acres, 1929, 59. 928389 degrees north 10.717624 degrees east 59.928389 10.717624 Valkyrie Plas Ladegardshagen is a small garden designed symmetrically with ornate hedges in Renaissance and Baroque style Freaparken is a private, enclosed garden near the chocolate factory, in strictly regular forms, noted for the wealth of its flora and many sculptures. Of the 25 parks in the inner city that are 2.5 acres 10,000 square meters or more, 19 are in the eastern section and X in the western sector in the Frogner and St. Hanshaugen sections. Topic. Outer city The major parks and green areas in the outer city are Other parks in the outer city termed in the city's plan grant plan for Oslo, arranged after district area, year constructed and size in brackets where known Vidal Alna, Farusetparken Faruset 
Vidal Björk, Svir Refstads Plas, Rislaka, Vitvetparken, Vitvet, Okernparken, Okern, refurbished 2007, Arvelparken, Arvel, Vidal Frogner, Bygdoy, Vidal Grorud, Grorudparken, Grorud, Ramsesparken, Ramses, Vidal Nordra Acker, Harold Hals Park, Ulaval Hagaby, Eleven Decker, Kjelsesparken, Kjelses, Vidal Nordstrand, Nordseater Parken, Vidal Stavner, Stavner Parken, Stavner, Vidal Sondra Nordstrand, Halligerjordet, Holmlia Parken, Holmlia, Lofsred Parken, Stensred Parken, Vidal Ullern, Vakiro Parken, Vidal Vestra Acker, Gausted Parken, Gausted, Havseater Parken, Havseater, Makrelbecken, Hofselva, Vidal Ostenzo, Trasaparken. Some of the old manor houses have gardens and parks that are open for public use. Sondraskoyan Manor, 1860s, private part, also called Den Engelski Park, Lindered Manor, Bogsted, Frogner. <laughs> 